So my very last video in the series on the top three things that you need to do in order to grow uh, Cattleyas well is going to be on when to repot. So the first two items were light. You want to give your Cattleyas as much light as possible and watering. You want to let them dry out completely between waterings. And uh, you can go back and see the other two videos on this. So today I am going to talk about when to repot. Now, um, Bill Rogerson, who is one of the highest uh, pointed um, award-winning people in the AOS, uh, has grown many award-winning Catalans, and so he came to speak to my Orchid Society about Catalaya species and their culture. And uh, I am going uh, over his points and then looking at my Catalaya culture to see how well I'm doing to achieve uh, what he says are the three most important things that you need to do. So today is repotting. When do you repot? So Bill says that you need to repot in such a way as to not damage any of the roots on your Catalaeas. Now, Catalaeas are sympodial orchids. That's uh, compared to monopodial orchids. So monopodial orchids grow straight up um, on a single stalk. The roots are at the bottom. They put new leaves up at the top. And um, if they uh, kiki, it's at the base. So a, this is Ascascenda hybrid right here is a monopodial. Um, Vandas right here are monopodial. Uh, Phalaenopsis are monopodial. Here's Schilleriana, so it's a monopodial. So you can see that its roots are at the bottom, its leaves are going to the top. But it's, monopodials are single. Um, Tolumnias are monopodial. Uh, let's see, Neo. Venetias are monopodial. Um, Oh, my Ingraco, which you can just barely see up there, is a monopodial. Uh, other examples, I'm on a, here's, here's another Vanda, it's a monopodial. Uh, let's see, uh, Oranges are monopodial. Harela retrocala right there is a monopodial. So, um, those are the monopodials. Most orchids are sympodial. So, Catalaeas are sympodial, and that means that they grow along a line. Um, and the new growths um, come from eyes at uh, the base of the newest growth. So here, here's a sympodial orchid that we can just see. So you can see it grows along the line. It has these rhizomes down at the bottom, like right here, the rhizome, right? The roots grow down and um, sometimes the line might divide right on the sympodial and so you'll get two growths, but you know, they grow along the line and you know, Catalaeas really exhibit this. So here is my yellow bird. You can really see its sympodial linear growth right here going along the line. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Dendrobiums are uh, sympodial. Um, Oncidinae are sympodial. Uh, most orchids are sympodial. Uh, so, what Bill says is that you basically, in a, in a sympodial orchid, when you have new growth, it, only on the newest growth does the roots grow. So that's where the new roots come out and they grow. And basically, once roots have grown on an old growth, they never grow again. So you only get new root growth um, on the newest growths and really, success in growing orchids is about growing roots. It's, in other words, you want to get these guys to bloom and know everything, you have to have a great root system. And that when you repot an orchid, you, a uh, sympodial orchid, when you repot a catalea, species catalea, you kill that root system. Because um, you take it out, you disturb it, and you whack off all the old media, and all those old roots, once you repot, in a month, they're going to be dead. So that's 
his proposition. And so what you want to do is you want to disturb the roots as little as possible when you're repotting. So he takes species catalaeas, therefore, and divides them into two groups. He has the species that follow the root before bloom pattern and the species that follow the root after bloom pattern. And what he means by this is that you need to observe your orchids and you have to figure out when they're going to root. Now, he knows it for his species um, because that's the great thing about species is they um, most of the plants in the species follow the same rules versus hybrids which have sort of lost that control and then we have to watch them and figure out when they're going to do these things. But basically, uh, you, he, he basically repots his orchids in such a way as to one, disturb the root mass as little as possible, but also he wants to repot right before um, roots start growing. So he's saying that rather than repotting when you have roots like, like this, that are like say two inches long, which was a lot of people say one to two inches, he's saying you should repot when the roots are still forming little nubs. I don't know that I have any that are forming little nubs, but that are just forming little nubs or like right before rooting is gonna start happening is when you should repot. And that when you do that, rather than taking the entire orchid out, banging off all the media and then repotting it, you should try to disturb the root mass as little as possible. So I'm gonna cut away to a video where I had to repot a plant um, and an orchid, uh, a Catalea hybrid, and I did it uh, according to Bill's rules, and then we'll come back and have a look at it uh, afterwards. Now, Bill Rogers said, says with cat layers that the best way to repot is to not disturb the root ball. So he says that cat layers grow best when you just take them completely out of the pot, like I have here, and then you just pot it into a larger size pot. So if you look at this, this entire solid root mass right here came out um, of a semi hydro pot. And I am not going to disturb it at all. I'm just gonna put it in this bigger pot and add some new hydrogen to it. And we'll see how it does. So this is my uh, my Marie Nohava Hollowed Abundance, and it's a multiflora that blooms in the fall. So we'll come back and check on it this fall to see if it liked how it was repotted. So here is that same orchid. It's all been pot up uh, right here on the top. I picked that big gigantic pot out. I filled it with um, hydrogen all the way around and I tried to disturb the root mass as little as possible. Okay, so Bill claims that Roots are the most delicate part of a catalea, um, maybe of any orchid. You know, flowers are sturdy, uh, pseudobulbs are sturdy, but roots are really delicate. And so what he wants uh, us to do is to basically not hurt the roots. And the, of course, easiest way to not hurt the roots when you're repotting is to repot it before the, right before the roots start um, forming or bursting out. So like right here, I have a tiny root coming out of this catalan. and he would say that if I was going to repot, this is the exactly right time to do it so that I wouldn't hurt this little root right here. Whoops, I hurt it. I touched it. So he's, uh, the other thing he says is that they're so delicate that if you touch them, then you've damaged them and they're going to stop growing. So I guess we'll have to find out if I've really hurt that little bit of root and um, it's going to stop growing. But that you want basically repot when your roots 
look like this. Tiny, tiny little bit of root coming out and you know, don't injure it because of his supposition is that roots only grow one time. So if you damage them, they stop growing and then that's it. And as you know, he, he claims, and you can see right here, my new root growth is coming out of the newest growth right here. Um, in the old one, this is all old here on this cattleya. And um, it, the, the, those roots aren't growing more. There's only new growth in the newest um, pseudobulb, which is actually pretty old. Um, so this one is obviously maybe a root after bloom one because it bloomed in December and you know now it's putting out roots. So I am going to go through and look at some of my repotted cattleyas. I had to start repotting um, in January and I wasn't paying attention to all this. I was just trying to, I have, I have a lot of repotting to do you know with um, 500 some plants and I just I didn't wait and so probably some of this stuff isn't going to make it because of this. I just had to take my chances such as they were. Um, so down here, oh, I can see a cat came through here and has disturbed this dendrobium, which is actually a little freebie plant from, uh, from the dumpster. And I'm trying to keep it alive, though it looks very dry. I don't know if it's going to make it. Um, okay, so let's see. Like over here are a bunch of the... Um, or I got this orchid right here from Gold Country. It's Orpedii by Orantiaca. It is really not looking well. Um, and you know what Bill claims is that, you know, all the old growths, all the roots will be dead when you repot it. So if you disturb it too much, like with this one, I wanted to put in semi-hydro. So I took it out of all its uh, medium that, you know, here now I'm looking at this, everything is dead here. This is probably not going to make it now. All right, whereas um, if you've repot something and you've disturbed its roots as little as possible, then uh, it's gonna do better. There's a higher, there's a bigger chance of good root growth and it will um, success, the, the repot will be success because you're not gonna stunt the growth when you repot. So let me see if I have anything here. Um, Oh, like right here. So this one where you can see all those roots coming out, it's too late. So according to, 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 to Bill, uh, this Catalan, which has all these roots coming out of it right here, those green root tips that I shouldn't be touching, it's too late to repot that one because uh, new root growth has already happened. I'm gonna have to wait until the next cycle for that. Uh, and I have to say that I don't know with all my hybrids, which ones are root before bloom and which ones are root after blue. Uh, he has his species divided up such that um, the ones that follow the root before bloom patterning um, are Catalea maxima, Catalea labiata, Catalea germanii, Catalea moriana, Catalea persevilliana, uh, quadricolor, triani, chodere, lorenciana, iricolor, mossiae, luteola, and mendelii. For the unifoliates and then for the bifoliates um, he says the one that root before bloom are Baringiana, Walkeriana, Lodigestii, Decari, Amethyst Glossa, Nobilor, um, Orantiac, and Skinneri. So uh, I have, so these are all root before bloom, their root should be done and then they're blooming now. I have Orantiaca back here. So here are my Orantiacas, right? And we can look down at their roots. Yep, they have their roots are already formed on the pseudobulb right here. So, yep, root before bloom. Um, I don't have Skinneri, but Guatemalensis is Skinneri by uh, Orantiaca. And, uh, well, it's hard to tell because it's, it's such a mess of roots right up there. But I can say that I did see a lot of new root growth in December and uh, now it's blooming. So root, it also follows its parents, which is root before bloom. Uh, the species that he has that are hardly root after blooms are Catalea ludomaniana, Carii, Warneri, Orzexii, Dawiana, Catalea rex, Gaxgeliana, Dawiana var aurea, 
Walisi, um, he also says that um, Glauca and Digbiana, which are, I guess they're now what, Rinko, Rinko something, um, he still calls them Brasavola or Brasavola, Glauca, Brasavola, Digbiana, he has those as root after bloom. Um, I don't know when they would. I have Aristocrat, which is Glauca by Digbiana, and uh, so that's on the floor right here. It's just finished blooming. Here, let's look at it. So see, uh, it's just finished blooming. So I should see now if it follows its parents and starts putting out roots. I can't tell the new growths. It doesn't look like the new growths have roots on them at all. That's, so that's a new growth right there. I'm not really seeing, I mean, there's lots of roots here, obviously. I spent a lot of time growing roots on this one. But, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I have not repot my aristocrat yet is that I know that I will have to disturb the roots to get that out of its pot and the pot to be redivided and I will be setting it back a lot. So I have not divided it yet. Uh, Bill's really into repotting your catalyas every year uh, or every other year. And he always puts them into like a pot one size up. He grows them right up to the rim and then he pots them in one size up. So I have an amethyst glossa right here, which is sort of following that. It's down, it's very hard. So it's right here. Let me see if I can focus on it. All right, and it's been it was potted one size up last year, and um, maybe I'll try to pot it one size. But he would basically um, soak this to take it out of its pot. It's in a clay pot, um, and very gently. And then he wouldn't remove any of the media. He would just take it and he would just put it into a pot one size bigger. And if there was any room, he'd add some media very loosely right around it, let it grow out, and then repot it again next year. So that's what Bill would do to repot. Uh, let's see, did I, fin I didn't finish my list of, uh, so those are the unifoliates that he says root after bloom. Then the bifoliates that root after bloom are Clandier, Schilleriana, Forbesii, um, Porphyral Glossa, Granulosa, Harrisoniana, Tigrina, Violacea, Schofieldiana, Velutina, Bicolor, Elongata, Guttata, and Leopoldii. Now, I have to say that I don't have most of these species, nor have I really successfully grown them. Uh, I only started moving into Catalea species about two to three years ago because species are hard. You have to do what they want or they die. Um, and so I just haven't had a lot of success with species yet because I'm lazy. I'll totally admit that I'm lazy. I don't want to spend all this time um, watching how something's supposed to grow and, um, you know, potting exactly the right time. And, uh, you know, I want to have lots of flowers. I want to enjoy them. I have not been that intense a grower of species because they just need more work and I'm lazy. So let's see, I've got Walker Rihanna right here. That's um, it's a leftover plant that we couldn't sell because it was pretty decrepit looking and it still looks really decrepit. Uh, this, according to him, would be a root before bloom. I don't know what it would bloom in. It looks really small, but um, obviously it's going to, it's maybe setting out a little bit of a new growth now right here, right here, right there. Uh, let me see, do I have any other? I had a Gattata in here, but I think I just pitched it because it looked crappy and like gonna die. So <laughs> that's how I solve some of my problems. If, oh, if, it, if, it's, ta if it's too much work, then um, compost. So let's see, what else do I have in here that's a species? Do I have any other stuff? Um, that species, I don't think so. I have a lot, like I said, I have mostly hybrids. I'm a big hybrid grower. Here's some sad little thing. Um, I've been trying to nurse along from gnats. I've been trying very hard to um, not disturb its roots, but 
You know, it totally shows Bill's idea that, you know, root growth only happens on the newest, the older ones, when I have, you know, all the roots rotted. And then you can see um, they're not growing there. And it's only in the front here that there's going to be root growth, which I haven't seen any yet. Um, who knows if this little tiny piece, which is obviously very unstable, is going to make it. But we keep nursing some things along. Um, I really probably should get rid of that. So let's see. What else do I have that I have? I mean, I can show you all my stuff that has not been doing well. Uh, I have lots of that. So here is something I got from Sunset Valley Orchids. It just came and has lots of new growth. I tried to repot it into semi-hydro. So it's from Sunset Valley. In the semi-hydro with a minimum amount of disturbance. It's probably too far in to see the um, roots right now. Can we? I'm not seeing any. Okay, here we go. Tiny little bit of roots. So Sunset Valley orchid um, catalayas red grows them so well, they usually bind their media really tightly, and I have a really hard time getting the media off. So a lot of times I put them in the semi-hydra, but there's still a lot of bark in there. So I am already following uh, the idea of disturbing my roots as least as possible. It doesn't always work because you know, you pot at the wrong time when the roots, the newest growth isn't going to put out roots and it just doesn't establish and it dies. Um, but like potting into semi hydroponics, you know, you got to have new root growth for it to be a success. So here's, here's um, a catalea down here. So I uh, had to repot this into semi hydroponics and see what it was. Um, this is my George King um, Southern Cross. Oh, I had to repot. Um, this one because, oh, it's actually a division. I have two of them now, but I had to repot it because the pot broke around it. And so you can see right here, it put out a new growth and now it's just starting to put out new roots. So I think this one's going to taste, it's going to be successful because um, I got it right at the right time. It was part of my January repot. But, you know, I didn't pay attention. So there are things that are just not going to make it. I'm sure I could show you a lot more things that are not going to make it, that are going to make it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I mean, some things, let's see. I have to repot all my Richard Mueller's here. Um, you can see they're all really crowded. So according to Bill's philosophy of not disturbing them, what I should do is I'm gonna have to take them all out. Um, I'm not gonna bang them and disturb the roots very much. And then I'm just gonna pot them to a slightly larger container with more hydrogen. So I have uh, other ones in here. Um, this over here is an Intermedia, which I can't remember what was on his. And um, I got it last fall from Equigenera, and I basically it came bare root, so I had to put it in something, and I worried that it would die all winter because, of course, the roots did nothing. So now it's putting out a new growth. So Intermedia, obviously, is going to be something that probably uh, puts the new growth out first, and then it's going to root. I don't know. Um, I didn't see new roots come out. It had uh, flowers on it when I bought it and I didn't see any rooting on it. So it's obviously not a root after bloom. It must be a root before bloom, uh, Catalea. So there's a lot of stuff that is languishing, possibly because I have pot it at the wrong time. And I don't have notes on when these guys put out their roots, whether they're root before bloom or root after bloom. Um, I have basically hoped that with hybrids, most of them would do their rooting in the spring. <laughs> and so I'd pot right before they started doing that um, or right when they're doing that. But, you know, clearly, you know, 
potting at the wrong time, like this Orpedii by Orantiaca, um, is just not gonna take. I don't know if this is gonna live. I mean, it looks sad, doesn't it? So uh, I have, let's see, this is Mark Jones Newberry by Bicolor that I got from uh, Carter and Holmes when I was there um, after Christmas and it was part of my uh, January repot madness. And so you can see it's got a big root right there that I tried very hard not to disturb. Um, and so hopefully it'll take it. Look, obviously looks in much better shape than the one from Gold Country, which we'll say is my fault that I repotted at the wrong time. All right, let's see. There's other Catalayas. So like this is one that I got from. It's this orange that's fading, and I got it from. Um, the Chicago Botanic Gardens um, last year and I tried to repot it in the semi-hydra over the summer and so it's pretty well established. You can see here it's all its new root growth but you know if you look down here this is the old roots and they haven't done anything. So that's part of Bill's statement that with the sympodial orchids, um, sympodial orchids, the old roots don't grow. Um, they might, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with if they just all die. He just says, you know, if you look at, uh, at orchids in, at that been repot, the roots after a month, they're all dead. Um, I would say that that's not true. I mean, these orchids aren't, these roots aren't necessarily dead. Um, there's certainly no new root growth going on, but I think they're still performing some of their root duties, such as absorbing nutrients. They look, some of them look alive at least. So that's how I'm doing on uh, repotting success based on choosing when uh, to repot. Um, it's been hit or miss. Obviously on the ones where I picked the right time, uh, they're doing better. Uh, this one right here that I had just shown you, which is my June Bug Venice Sunshine with its tiny new growth. Um, this had also been repot in December, also because its pot broke. And um, I had followed that idea of uh, not uh, disturbing the roots very much for it. And, you know, it's taking now because it is a root after bloom. And so it put out new roots after I repot it. So good timing. But of course, like I said, the ones with bad timing, gonna die. Gonna die, not gonna make it. All right, so I hope that people have learned something about repotting and uh, when to repot, at least, if not how to repot, uh, and that you go through your collection and see if you're potting at the right time.